Hey guys, uh, here's a quick uh, Nuke NDK C++ tutorial and uh, I just wanted to go go about how you can use Nuke NDK to create your own plugins for Nuke and uh, before we start I just wanted to go over the setup I have right now uh, I'm using uh, Nuke 9.0 right uh, and uh, I have Visual Studio 2010 installed Visual Studio 2010 is the uh, compiler that's recommended for new for using Nuke NDK and uh, I also have service pack 1 for Visual Studio 2010 that's installed and uh, we don't have to do any setup for uh, include files or library files in Visual Studio will because we will be using we'll be starting with uh, Nuke's uh, example plugin that's uh, already uh, in the Nuke folder and uh, w what I'll be doing is I'll just go over the example plugin that we have and uh, we, we will uh, we'll be creating our own uh, small plugin from we'll be doing a small change in, in whatever default plugin has and uh, I also want to mention that uh, this NDK should be working only with the uh, professional or commercial version because in the PLE version uh, the documentation says that the DLL files cannot be loaded I have tried that but uh, I think it should only work with the commercial version of Nuke if you want to develop plugins and uh, this is going to be C++ uh, Nuke's NDK is all C++ and uh, yes let's get started and uh, I'll, I'll go over uh, the base code I also have a blog where I go much more in depth on each one of those lines in the NDK now yep let's get started here you go. Uh, we have our program files and I'm opening Nuke 9.0 folder. Now when you open this folder you you will get uh, documentation go inside there and then you have NDK folder over there. Over here you will find examples plugins VC10. Uh, we'll go into VC10 over here which has the Visual Studio 2010 example file. The readme file gives you the entire description of the whole if you need to set up from scratch you have all the details over here you don't have to worry about anything you can follow this if you get stuck if you're developing from scratch but uh, I'm just opening the default example plugin Visual Studio project file and uh, yeah you have to open it as an admin and uh, because you'll be compiling this plugin so I'm just opening the default example that comes with Nuke and uh, we have the whole uh, C++ file over here and uh, I'll go over each one of these uh, things in, in, in minute detail later on but to start with uh, usually you'll be having this whole plugin in uh, debug mode and uh, I have it in uh, re release mode over here and uh, let's get started by just compiling this plugin and uh, make sure it's in release mode I'm repeating it again. Uh, debug had some issues for me. It was not working. And then uh, I'm building this plugin over here. Right click rebuild and you should get it as uh, succeeded. And I did not do any change. I'm just opening with Visual Studio 2010 and it should be working straight away out of the box. And uh, uh, so when you build a plugin, you get a DLL file which gets, uh, which goes into the output directory. Like you see, it, it, it goes into the default output directory and uh, here it is actually in the NDK folder you get a new x64 folder and that's your DLL file and uh, yeah it, it basically creates your DLL file over there by default and also it copies for nuke uh, dot nuke folder in your my documents thing so it actually copies uh, in using the post uh, build events uh, this is already all there in your Visual Studio project so I'm just showing you in case you wanted to know how it's copying. Uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll show you my my documents folder and uh, here it is Vivek and uh, my Nuke and example plugin .dll is copied from my NDK folder automatically. Now Nuke searches here to get plugins. This is where you need to have your custom DLL uh, things uh, like plugins to be here so that uh, Nuke can find them and load them into Nuke. I'll, I'm opening my Nuke 9.0 now. There you go. We have it and uh, I'll let's load it. To load it, to load your plugin you need to, uh, like, well let's try loading it by pressing tab and typing my plugin name 
and like you see it's not you're not, you're not getting any node over there so you all have to do is go there plugins update then new goes into document such as gets all the plugins and then now if you press tab and uh, uh, yep tab and uh, when you type in sorry uh, example plugin and uh, for example plugin you should that's that it's it recognized the example plugin and all it's doing is uh, this plug default plugin is just uh, getting grayscale values of whatever the input image is so there's your color bars and uh, I'm just using as an example and uh, the example plugin basically converts any input data into grayscale values uh, that's the default function that it's doing and it's doing a good job it's doing what it says it's converting into grayscale values now I, I just wanted to go a little bit more so as you see here uh, when I uh, the X and Y values when I move my mouse you see X and Y values changing the so the way nuke works is it, it takes in each row and processes that row so uh, as you see when I move my mouse you are seeing the X and Y values change where uh, X is uh, X coordinate Y is Y coordinate and uh, it's it's basically taking each row and it's calculating I'll show you more when we get back to Visual Studio but that's that's how uh, it's working you, you got uh, you got it right uh, X and Y uh, values are crucial here now let's get back to Visual Studio all right uh, here you go Visual Studio back to Visual Studio I'll, I'm so to start with have your header files inside Visual Studio all set up uh, based on whatever the plugin you're doing and the class uh, basically you, here you have all your basic functions and constructors and destructors uh, named and then uh, uh, all the function calls here are basically according to Nuke and DK that which are required in order to create your plugin uh, you, you're basically following Nuke and DK's uh, rules over here by declaring validate request engine and all these helper functions which are which are basically required for the way nuke operates i have a more detail on each one of these in uh, in my blog and uh, like, uh example plugin create is basically having the instances created for you and the description is needed to describe uh, to to have a basic description of how your plugin works when you point it inside nuke and uh, that's where you change your uh, name of your plugin and then the help function of course that's it's a string where you can have any helper thing uh, helper function for the te text written for it we need validate to validate all the channels that are coming in inside request basically request every row of uh, pixels engine is really crucial for the main it's it's a main thing which actually executes for each row you're basically saying a channel mask that I need uh, all just my RGB channels now in engine you get each row and uh, it's declared it, it's get, it goes to the input row and for input row you're basically getting the entire row of pixels storing it inside the input row variable and uh, it's it, you're just declaring the start point end point and the RGB mask and getting all your pixels then the for loop is going for each pixel from x0 to x uh, maximum that is r and uh, for each pixel you you go we have a variable new value just uh, that's a variable and then you go into each channel of each pixel and then uh, calculate uh, the rgb just add them all together store it in new value that's what you're doing over here uh, taking all the rgb values putting into new value and then in in the next line what you're doing is basically calculating the average value of all the channels new value is equal to new value channel start size which in our case is channel start size is 3 and uh, you're storing the RGB average and new value and you're writing down all the pixels back into their corresponding uh, X coordinates let's do let's do a simple change for this plugin whatever we had so far what we do is we we will 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 take the rows and we'll make sure the alternate rows have grayscale and the other alternate rows have uh, color values in them. So to do that, I'm just writing a if statement saying, hey, whenever your y coordinates is 
e1 that that is y mod 2 double equal to 0 which says uh, y when y is 0 2 4 6 8 I want uh, grayscale uh, which is the new value variable and or else I, I would like my output to remain whatever the RGB value that's coming in which is so which I for which I'm just copying my input row of x coordinate pixels into my output row just passing through without manipulating those pixels so over here I should be getting my alternate rows to be color and uh, the other alternate rows should be grayscale. Let's go ahead and build it and uh, build succeeded yes and uh, I hope uh, we get we get the desired plugin effect but uh, this is a this is a very really basic thing but remember whenever you're building it here make sure nuke is closed uh, or else uh, Visual Studio will give you an error because uh, you cannot be running the DLL file inside Nuke when you're compiling it inside Visual Studio. So make sure Nuke is closed before you build it. All right, we have our Nuke here. Let's test our plugin. Hopefully it should work and uh, I have updated it. And uh, I'm getting my color bars as again the test. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get my color bars and then example plugin. Um, connecting um, I should hopefully see alternate uh, things connected it should take some time to process yeah there you go there you go all, all the alternate rows are exactly how we expected we have grayscale values whenever y is even and whenever y is odd uh, we have the color channel just coming through and passing through and uh, it's exactly working how we wanted and that's like a basic start for uh, a plugin which which can do a simple job in this in our case but you can basically go go crazy with your engine uh, engine function and uh, add add any nice algorithms to do what you want so I hope that helped and uh, uh, before we go I just wanted to show you in the NDK folder and you go to examples you have all a all the C++ source code over here for different types of plugins. So I, I would encourage you to like go into each one of them and uh, look in how the code is working. If you have something to start, if you have an idea to do some plugin, then you, this is a great start to go into the base code and uh, look in how it's similar to what you want and and then get started and uh, you can create uh, basically any plugins, readers, writers, and uh, DPXRs, uh, Image pro best image processing plugin ba basically, and uh, I hope this helped. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer uh, in the comments below. And thank you very much.